Okay, today I just thought I'd just show you how to paint a vertical surface. This had a couple of coats on it so far, and these are final coats. But it's more about um, brushing out. I've seen too often where people have painted a vertical surface and there's runs everywhere, they've caked on too much paint, or the paint is too thick, they don't need too much heat. Now today is a pretty hot day to be fair. It is very early still, about 10 o'clock-ish. Now first of all, you're going to need a brush, which I have in this bucket. And I store this in just water. I don't put it in turpentine at this stage. I only put it in turpentine when I want to finally clean the brush out. But at the moment, all I want to do is prevent the actual paint that's on the brush going hard. And this is a cheap and nasty fiberglassing um, type brush with plastic bristles. It's not great. So I just want to prove a point that you can actually use a fairly crappy brush for the purpose of um, painting vertical surfaces. Yes, not as Hamilton's perfection would be preferred. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake this out, so I just do that literally, get rid of any excess water, move the bucket, you don't need that now, that out of the way. Once I'm, once I'm confident I've got rid of most of the water, I'll just use a cloth, or a tissue in this case, to uh, remove water from the handle and the stock. Okay, the paint I'm using is an oil-based paint. I like that. I've, I've thinned it down, maybe a little bit too thin, but it's what's required at the moment because it's so warm, it's literally evaporating very quick on the actual surface that I'm painting. Um, so I've, I've mixed it with a little bit of white spirit, um, which you can get in France, and obviously you can get anywhere to be honest. Um, but it's an oil, oil based paint, not a water based paint. I don't recommend water based paints, although there are some good quality ones out there, and yes, they do make life a lot easier. Um, but personally, I find it um, a bit rubbish. I don't, I don't find that their um, longevity is very good. So, you know, if you want something that's going to last, I would use a good quality oil-based paint. In this case, this one is a polyurethane, which is a quite a hard finish. Ideally, a microporous paint, so the timber can breathe, so you don't trap the moisture behind the paint. But saying that, if you can get hold of some decent oil-based paints, I certainly recommend them. But if, you're, if you are a jobbing builder and you're fitting some shutters for somebody and you've got to paint them as well, oil-based paint might not be the thing for you because oil-based paint can take a long while to dry. You know, you get a bit of humidity in the air and it could be several days before it dries. You get a day like today, it might only take a day to dry, you know, before you can actually sand it. So it, it's very um, humidity dependent. Um, but yes, I would use a oil based paint but also I would prefer to use a liquid paint not um, a non-drip. I find non-drip paints to um, be a little bit lumpy and horrible. It's like painting with cream cheese frankly you know get yourself a good quality oil based liquid paint you know this is not what it is in the tin because obviously there's primer this is a tin I had and I've just decanted it into this tin. So anyway I hope that was of interest. I'll pop the lid off, which looks like it's already pretty much popped off anyway. So I'll take the lid off there, and first things first, so if you look into there, it's starting to separate already in there. So you've got the um, oils and the actual pigments um, separated from each other. So I'll just grab them my little stirry stick and give it a good old stir. Grab a brush, and what you do is, when you put your brush into your paint, you don't just dunk it in and splash it everywhere, because you just going to have a hell of a mess. The other thing you shouldn't really do is scrape it on the side of your tin, like so many people do. What you should do is pat it on the side of your tin. So you load your brush about halfway up the bristles, like that, and then you pat it on the side of your tin to remove any excess. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with cross strokes at the top here, and then down all the corners, so we do all those first. The reason why you pat the sides is you, you don't add air into your paint. When you scrape the brush off the side, you'll actually put air bubbles into your paint, and then you'll transfer them into, into your workpiece, and you've got, then you've got the sub dust you've got to brush out. So now I'm going to apply the paint to the vertical surface, and I'm going to do it in a sideward stroke like this, horizontal stroking, okay? Making sure that I use the side of the brush enough to clear the, the paint from the side of the brush. 
so we don't build up in the stock and all runs down your hands. A little bit of loading there. Because the paint is thin, it's actually going on really, really easy. Now if you were putting it on as it came out of the tin, you'd be dragging that paint over the surface because the surface has already warmed up with the sun. And considering that this has been a very, very warm year in 2019, it's made things very, very difficult. So that quickly, that's already got a coating over the entire surface. So now what we do is our vertical strokes. So I've got the paint on there, ridiculously quick as you saw. And the areas that I've actually um, done on the perimeter there, um, have actually already start stiffening and it's warm. So now all I'm going to do is just make sure the brush is kept moist at the stage. Starting at the top, bringing my brush down. And you see there's bubbles in that. Top here, you can't, you can't see it, but there's, there's bubbles in it. Just brush them out. And bring the brush back up again. So you come down with your bristles, with your brush. Bring it down, like so. And then on the final stroke, you bring it up. Come down. You need to make sure you keep your brush reasonably and back up. So you, you come down and then back up. And when you come back up, you're flicking the, the bristles off the surface. You come down with the tips of your bristles, flicking them up. And that stops the um, area at the bottom that will have loads of lumps. So you have to work relatively quickly because it's already stiffening up. And because it's already stiffening up, we have to make sure that we keep the actual brush moist. Not, it's not wet with paint, but moist. You've already got paint on the actual vertical surface. So you bring it down, push the bristles into the end. When you leave, you leave gradually. It's like you're just touching it. Remember, this is a rubbish, cheap ass brush, which doesn't obviously help, but most people seem to buy cheap ass brushes. So, I thought it might make sense. Now it's already started stiffening up on the surface because the surface is warm and the solvent is evaporating out of the paint. I'm just gently using the tips of my bristles. This is, this is, this is a cheap ass brush, but it's actually well worn now. This has actually softened up quite a bit. So now I'm just going to make sure that I touch up around these edges. So I'm, I've loaded up these other areas. We've got the vertical surface that's now been painted, it's stiffening up gently, so what we have to do now is we have to re reduce the risk of the brush strokes. So just by using just the very, very tips of the bristles, you can very gently just stroke the surface, and that breaks the, the, the peaks of the actual brush strokes. The problem is with these cheap... That's what I looked on. <laughs> Um, from these cheap brushes, they don't hold a lot of paint in, in the actual bristles because there isn't many bristles. Yeah, a good brush will be to be loaded with quite a bit of paint, really. Anyway, there you go. No runs, reasonably flat. It is a bit tricky in this heat, but it's not impossible. And it's a rubbish, rubbish, rubbish paintbrush. So that's how I paint a vertical surface. And this technique will apply to your window shutters. So anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, if you'd be most kind, then subscribe and like and what have you. And uh, check out our website, which is wadibwa.com. And have a look at our other tutorials in our how-to section. Oh, there you go.